So the reason that I'm starting this video with a screenshot from a Ryan Chapman video about what George Orwell actually believed uh, is because of this specific quote. This kind of thing is frightening to me because it often gives me the feeling that the very concept of objective truth is fading out of the world. If you remember, guys, I've brought up on this channel many times in the past that you know, George Orwell had warned that if you see that there is an effort to try to remove objective truth, that some form of authoritarian movement is trying to take control of the narrative. So much of George Orwell's work was about people rewriting words or concepts to try to control people's minds through controlling the language. And that's somewhat relevant to what we're going to be discussing in this video, which is that unfortunately, a scientist, a well-known scientist, is a Totally lost the fucking plot. So Neil deGrasse Tyson um, is getting roasted all over Twitter for this now, but he's apparently decided to dive in on the woke stuff. So let's have a listen to this, and I'll pause it periodically when I feel I need to comment. My point is, apparently, the XXXY chromosomes are insufficient. Because when we wake up in the morning, we exaggerate what Every feature we want to portray the gender of our choice. Yeah, it's called like makeup. It's a fantasy. It's actually meant to kind of mi misrepresent yourself. That's actually, I've always been attracted to girls who don't wear it. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with girls who do like wearing it. My point is, it's just that, you know, those of us who like to see things in the real, you know, I like a natural looking girl. And the, but the main point here is, is that he's saying that chromosomes are somehow insufficient to define gender because makeup, you know, that has nothing to do with it. it like, anyway, let's keep going. <sighs> Either the one you're assigned, the one you choose to be, whatever. It the one you're assigned. The, this is another thing that's just flagrantly, obviously bullshit. You're not assigned a gender. Your chromosomes are your chromosomes. You know, just as that. Uh, one very gifted senator pointed out during the recent Crenshaw hearings about gender-affirming care. Are you assigned chromosomes at birth? No, they are what they are. It is. And so now, here, so, so now just to, to tie a bow on this, I say to you, somewhere I read, somewhere, I, well, I think I read that the United States was a land where we have the pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness does not obligate everyone around you to participate in whatever version of reality that you want to be true. This is where the problem lies. People want to have their truth, and you better go along with it, or you're evil, even if what they're saying isn't true. And it's not just about the gender stuff, it's about a lot of things. And a scientist has to oppose this. There is the truth. Period. Yes. Suppose no matter my chromosomes, today I feel 80% female, 20% male. I'm going to I'm going to put on makeup. I'm going to do that. Um, tomorrow I might feel 80% male. I'll remove the makeup and I'll wear a muscle shirt. But that's not even like normal behavior. <laughs> today I feel male, today I feel female. That's just bullshit. People don't just do that. That that's the thing. The, the rest of this I just Anyway, let's keep going. Why do you care? Yeah. No, this part I agree with. Okay. The libertarian part of me feels that consenting adults should be allowed to do whatever they want. That's not the issue. They want us to care. It, it, it's not just a limit of that, Neil. I'm, I'm talking to you as a Neil, right? Because I'm also a Neil. <laughs> Why do I care? Because they're trying to convince kids who may not actually be trans, often who have other comorbid psychological conditions, that the way to solve their problems will be to undergo extreme medical procedures that there are no long-term studies to determine the safety or effectiveness of. You're a scientist. You're a fucking scientist. You have a responsibility as a scientist to call it out when there is no such evidence. People don't just feel their chromosomes away. That was the point. Now, if an adult wants to engage in this, then, then fine. Like you said, why do you care? But they're not, they're not content, Neil, to just stop with that. 
They want the rest of us to go along with it too. And up to and including their participation in sports, which we're going to get into later because his take on that was even more embarrassing. What, 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 what business it, is it of yours to require that I fulfill your inability to think of gender on a spectrum? My point is... I well, the problem with that, Neil, is that what business it of, is it of theirs to try to indoctrinate our children to see gender that way? You see, you, you can't have it both ways, but that's exactly how they want it to be. They want to have it both ways, which is that it's their right to be any way that they want, and it's their right to make your children any way that they want. And they, and they just, like, glowingly embrace it and brag about it, and then they wonder why people aren't happy. We're here, we're queer, we're coming for your children. So, Chloe actually... Uh, a you know, famous detransitioner breaks this down. So we're going to play her video, too. Apparently, the XXXY chromosomes are insufficient. Because when we wake up in the morning, we exaggerate whatever feature we want to portray the gender of our choice. How about we stop confusing basic human biology with cosmetics? Like, what a weird jump. If I, I don't wear makeup most days. If I leave the house without makeup on, does that make me like 70% male? Somewhere, I, I think I read that the United States was a land where we have the pursuit of happiness. If it was only truly about aesthetics, nobody would care. It's my business because you're using 1950s gender stereotypes to justify an ideology that leads to the sterilization and mastectomies of 15-year-old girls who just don't fit in. Girls like me. Suppose no matter my chromosomes, today I feel 80% female, 20% male. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on makeup. I'm going to do that. Um, tomorrow I might feel 80% male. I wonder what his gender was when you recorded this. Like, he doesn't have a muscle shirt on, right? No spray tan, no falsies. It's probably like 50% male in this. I'll remove the makeup and I'll wear a muscle shirt. Why do you care? Yeah. What, 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 what business it, is it of yours to require that I fulfill your inability to think of gender on a spectrum? Because the only thing that you've established in this video is that men wear trousers and tank tops, but women, they wear lipstick and dresses. The idea that people can be percentages of either male or female just further reinforces the fact that biological sex is a binary. There's only two. There may only be two sexes, but there are an infinite number of personalities. I mean, it really doesn't take a degree in astrophysics to understand that. Apparently, it's a very good dig by Chloe there at the end because he's just a fucking astrophysicist, and this really shouldn't be his area of expertise. But people who are not astrophysicists or any kind of scientists comment on this all the time. The reason that, again, that this enrages me is he's a scientist. No scientist should be spewing this fucking bullshit. It's just that simple. So this is where he loses the plot further on this issue. And like, I want to listen to this whole podcast at some point because, oh my God. Anyway, I'm just going to play it and you know how I'm going to react. It is a little weird that we split people by male and female in this way. I'm imagining a hundred years from now looking back and say, do you know back a hundred years ago? They split boys and girls, and they couldn't compete. They, and I was like, that'd just be kind of a little weird. I, I don't know, think. Neil, because the I can imagine is thinking on, how weird yeah, that is. I could imagine that too, but the differences are so massive. On average, again, I've seen the pictures of you, as a, you as a college wrestler. Listen to me. But the yes, average okay. woman okay. is not going to be able to take the average woman wrestler is not going to be able to take down you when you were in your your peak. Okay. Maybe the Michael. best female. You sound like a, you're, you're an old man on the porch in a rocking chair right now. I'm telling no, no. you, <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm telling you, you are criticizing something 
that is in need of modification. It is a little weird. It's not a little weird. And the reason he brought up this is because, again, Neil deGrasse Tyson wrestled for Harvard at the college level. Now, there weren't a lot of women wrestling when he was, so maybe he's not thinking about it. But it doesn't change the fact that as this guy just, you know, Mark Lewis Sherman just buried him with, and he's just going on talking like, a, you know, a totally salient, rational point wasn't just shared with him. This is fucking shocking to me. Seriously. This is absolutely ridiculous. Neil deGrasse Tyson is just going to say, I'm sure 100 years from now, he'll be chuckling and saying, did you know that, that, that they used to separate men and women in sports? So if 100 years from now, we don't separate men and women from sports, what we're going to be chuckling about is, did you know that there used to be women who tried to compete in sports? <laughs> because there won't be any women in sports anymore, Neil. We didn't separate men and women by sports for some weird reason. We did it due to biological realities. We did it due to biological realities. Scientifically measurable realities. In some of these podcasts, you go on rants about not liking conservatives because they didn't want to be forced to take a vaccine. Well, real scientists are looking at that situation too. But that doesn't suddenly make this okay. You have lost the fucking plot. I, I've recommended Neil deGrasse Tyson to so many people on so many things. I hope the next time he goes on Joe Rogan, Joe calls him out on this. And God, I would love to debate him on it. I would love to. Because I'm not just going to let him do this. You're a scientist. If you, know, if you have beliefs about somebody's libertarian right to express themselves as adults any way they want, that's fine. But the notion that any scientist can sit by and watch as we essentially experiment on an entire generation of children without scientific evidence, I, I just, it's unbelievable. And that's why it worries me, because it reminds me of this. This is kind of frightening to me, because it often gives me the feeling that the very concept of objective truth is fading out of the world. This is what Orwell was warning us about. Orwell, who is a socialist, who helped and fought alongside the anarcho-communists in Spain, who Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler teamed up to kill. Orwell was worried about this very issue. When an authoritarian something, whatever it is, is trying to take over, one of the first things that needs to go is objective truth. Because they want to be able to dictate to you what is and is not, whether it's objectively true or rational or logical. You remember that clip that I always play from during the time that they were witch hunting Brett Weinstein at the Evergreen College? And at one point, a student screamed at Brett and said, you have to stop demanding that people use logic and reason and white forms of knowledge. Let that sink in, folks. Th this is scary shit. When an app, you know, a totally like famous, mainstream, award-winning scientist can just simply demand that we all deny reality and that he is heavily in support of something that does not have any scientific basis for its validity or safety, we're in trouble. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and ring the bell. Later today, I'll have on, once again, Derek Jensen, uh, the now viral professor who was teaching Antifa about the pedophile connection directly to queer theory and how it had infiltrated you know, anarchy and gender ideology. Uh, he finally is getting recognition for something that went on years ago. He's a good friend. He's been on my show several times. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. That's going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Take care.